Hello and welcome to October's Cancer Inspirations podcast, where we continue our journey through my book, Meditation with Intention. And this month we are focused on Intention 5, I Live My Life for Me. And in this chapter, we will explore how you can start dialing down all of the external noise surrounding you, irrespective of where you are on your cancer journey. We will do this by looking at the practice of meditation and the practice of yogic concentration as a way to liberate ourselves from our bondage we wit within. We will also explore the importance of finding balance in our lives and the power of nature as a healing tool. And the question that I want to invite you to reflect about is how many of us are constantly receiving unsolicited feedback about our life choices from family, friends, and colleagues. Add social media, TV, magazines, and advertising into the mix. And it began to dawn on me recently how much unsolicited feedback we receive every day. This feedback ranges from lifestyle choices to what we eat, where we live, who we date, where we travel, what we wear, and even our choice of hairstyle. If we allow ourselves, we can become bombarded by this outside noise constantly so much that it begins to drown out our own inner wisdom. Throw in modern society, fast-paced lifestyles, and the onslaught of technology, and it just gives you a headache trying to keep up with it all. There is a beautiful parable about a frog aiming to reach the top of a tree. All the other frogs told the frog it was impossible and that they would never reach the top. The frog thought that all of the negative comments were in fact positive encouragement, urging them to fulfill their dream. They reached the top by turning a deaf ear to all of the negativity surrounding them. And we can all resonate with this story of the frog and I encourage you to take the lesson into your own lives. Your perception ultimately becomes your reality. In the above story, the frog refused to engage in any of the negative chatter around them. Instead, they turned it into something positive and focused solely on their goal of reaching the top of the tree. The frog achieved their goal with perseverance, dedication, and unwavering commitment. And this is the exact recipe we all need if we are going to find our true purpose within. As we progress on our paths, there will always be people telling us we can't, that it will never happen, and similar. The amount of times I have heard that throughout my life, I have lost count. We may have overbearing family and friends who feel they are looking out for us by trying to steer our lives in a certain direction, according to their belief systems, and they often have the best of intentions. Meditation and mindfulness practices aid us in drowning out the outside noise. Other people's opinions are just that, opinions. If we allow ourselves to be swayed by everybody who has an opinion about our lives and what we should be doing, we will never get anywhere. Nor will we be able to make any decisions that leave a lasting impact, as we will have no conviction behind them. So this is where the practice of concentration is pivotal. And without mastering concentration, we really are not able to get into a state of meditation. And this is really important and something that I really want us to focus on. If you put in the time and effort with no external noise deterring you from your goal, the path of concentration will lead you to where you have set your intention on going. We are not using the full capacity of our brains or our minds. And imagine what we could achieve if we were able to harness more of our contemplative power within to create both material and more importantly, physical health, spiritual success and inner peace in our lives. And inner peace can be something that we spend our lives chasing, but may often seem just out of our reach. As a litmus test, ask yourself this simple question. Are you happy? And take some time to reflect on what comes up and sit with this. And happiness with a cancer diagnosis is difficult. It's difficult to 
sometimes maintain a positive frame of mind throughout your treatment, especially when you are in pain or you're feeling fatigue or you're feeling a bit hopeless or helpless. And if there are areas in your life where you are feeling unfulfilled, then make a plan for what you can do as guided in chapter three. So you can always go back and re-listen to episodes of this podcast to remind you. Remember that you are, if you are feeling unsatisfied in some or all areas of your life, nothing will change unless you start making tangible changes. The first step toward happiness can simply be to take a breath, slow down and really focus on what is going on internally. My favorite saying to my patients and clients is the wallpaper of our minds becomes the landscape of our lives. Start to notice your own internal dialogue as it has a major effect on your external situation. It may have more than you realize in turn directly affecting your happiness and sense of self-worth. And this is really important, and we all have to find our own way through the journey and do what feels right for us personally. Meditation allowed me to release any fears I had around all of the unsolicited advice I've received in my life and just tune in to doing what I thought was best for myself and find that sense of self-worth from within. The more we journey within, the more we can nurture our own self-worth and tune out all of the outside external noise. Finding balance is also really important, and balance can be something that juggling our busy lives and our health and your cancer diagnosis becomes another problem, something that we feel that we're failing at. But if we're not able to find balance within, it is easy to become swayed by people around you. If our external, or more importantly, internal narrative is negative, it can end up turning us toward the darkness within and away from the light. Most of us have received programming from the day we were born about what we should like, what we should believe in, and what we should dislike. This conditioning stems from our parents' and caregivers' belief systems, but may not, as we grow older, surprise, surprise, coincide with our own belief systems. The discrepancy between the two creates resistance and guilt as we strive to find our own meaning of life as opposed to somebody else's. As we grow into adulthood, the most important voice becomes our own. And of all of the people on this planet, you talk to yourself more than anyone else does. It is that internal narrative that becomes key, so you have to make sure that you are saying the right things to yourself. Through the practices of meditation and mindfulness, you can reprogram any negative conditioning that doesn't resonate with you anymore or is no longer serving your highest good. We can become so focused on what other people are telling us that we forget to be aware of what we are telling ourselves, which is the most important narrative of all. Be very mindful of your own internal dialogue as these are some of the most important conversations you will ever have. The conversations you have with yourself are pivotal to the practices of self-awareness, self-care, and self-love. Yes, a lot of self going on here. The path of meditation and yoga helps us to start tuning in as the impartial observer of our minds without judgment or criticism but simply tuning in to what is going on inside. As I said before, and will keep saying throughout this book, the wallpaper of your mind becomes the landscape of your life. Choose your thoughts wisely and be aware of the internal canvas you are creating. This is what you can control. Which brings us to the next point, control what you can. There is a lot in life beyond our control, and yet we spend so much time and energy trying to control people and situations leading us nowhere. What you can control is yourself and your thought processes, so a good place to begin this work is focusing on your own mind. Trust me, this will keep you busy enough, so much so that you won't have time to worry about what anybody else is doing. 
Now, when I find myself worrying about what other people are doing or saying, I bring myself back to being concerned about my own words and actions, which is more than enough to keep me occupied and all that I am in control of anyway. The other part that you have to be aware of is to not give up. We often self-sabotage or tire and give up just before a major breakthrough can occur. We don't get to see the magic that could have unfolded if we had more patience to wait it out a bit longer. You have to put in the dedicated time and effort doing that internal and external work. And also be patient enough to not lose hope or give up in the process. A mindfulness and meditation practice really helps you to find the commitment to do the work and have faith that the right results for you will come. It might not look exactly as you expected it to, but it will be exactly what is meant for you. And what is meant for you will not disappear if you give it your all and remain unattached to outcomes. If you put in the time and dedication without the external noise that deters you from your goal and with the use of concentration, and particularly that single-pointed concentration and unwavering focus, your path will surely lead you where you are meant to go. Being unattached to specific outcomes is also imperative. Do the work, put in the time and effort required to reach your goals and intentions, and then let go of your attachment to how you think things should go. Instead, open yourself up to being led by a higher power that knows what is best for you and is guiding you forward on your path. How can you tap into your inner power? One of my favorite things about mindfulness and meditation practices is that they enable you to start looking for validation from within and not from everybody else around you. It can be difficult to harness your power from within. Often you may feel pressurized to succumb to what other people want you to do versus what you want to do. And this creates an inner restlessness that becomes the death of concentration. So often I hear my clients and patients tell me how they live their lives trying to please everybody around them and how it has led to much internal frustration and lack of happiness in their own lives. I am fully aware that nobody else can make me happy. Family, friends, career can contribute to my sense of happiness and well-being, but ultimately I will always be disappointed if I am constantly searching outside of myself for my sense of happiness and validation. And this can be a difficult concept to embrace, as in the West we are taught from childhood that happiness can be found outside of ourselves in relationships, jobs, material possessions, vacations, and so on. Having success in life isn't about some random stroke of luck that occurs or fate or talent necessarily. It can be about believing something so wholeheartedly that there is no other possible outcome apart from what you are setting your intention to be. The mind is the ultimate shaper of our reality. The repetition of affirmations or positive intentions can also help. So I strongly encourage you to actually start repeating the intentions at the beginning of each chapter in this book to yourself as you read the chapters and work on carrying these intentions from the pages of this book into your mind and life. And I want to end by talking about the importance and the power of nature. A great way to connect to that place of peace within is by spending time in nature. And for those of us living in Southern California, we have no excuse. So your five-minute nature practice for this month is to find a spot in nature, even in your own backyard or a nearby park or green area or the beach, and begin by closing your eyes and taking a few deep calming inhales and slow relaxing exhales. Focus on emptying your mind of your thoughts, your worries, and any anxieties in this moment. And allow yourself to bring your mind and body into a state of complete relaxation as you surrender yourself to nature and repeat the intention for this chapter ten times. I live my life for me. I live my life for me. I live my life 
for me. And then release the intention and start to visualize what you would really like your life to be. Perhaps focus on one thing that you have really been yearning for, whether it's your health, physical, mental, emotional, and start to imagine what that would be like. Whatever it might be, a relationship, your health, a career, a big move, really start to breathe life into this picture on your blank canvas. And imagine yourself at your destination, having achieved what you wished for. If your mind starts drifting to the negative in your visualization, use your breath to keep you anchored in the present. Tune in to nature around you, opening yourself up to the notion that anything is possible. If you maintain a positive outlook and keep dreaming it, you can do it. Wishing you all a month filled with knowing and embracing that you are living your life for you.